Greetings, Wambui Bahati here. Welcome to Wambui Made It. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to loom knit a version of the 10 stitch blanket. I believe that the 10 stitch blanket is a genius concept. So much so that I asked Frankie Brown for permission to demonstrate a version of her 10 stitch blanket on this channel. She was very gracious and said that that would be fine. She usually doesn't charge for her patterns. What she does ask is that if you're able to make a donation to the Children's Liver Foundation. I have a link below this video. If you're able and if you are so inclined, I am asking that you make a donation to the Children's Liver Foundation. Now to be clear, I can't say that this is her pattern. I've never seen her pattern. What I'm saying is that this is a version of a 10 stitch blanket based on her original concept. Also, I'd like to say if at any time you feel that I'm repeating too much, I'm going too slow, then the video is broken up into chapters. Check in the description box below. See where you want to be and you go right there. Now that we've said all that, you know what? Let's just get to it. Before I get my yarn and my loom and my hook, I have something that I want to show you that I think it will help you to understand the big picture. So for instance, this paper right here represents the first section that we are going to loom knit. Now you can make it rectangle, you can make it square. This section is going to be the center of our 10 stitch blanket. And this um, paper or this section that we loom knit is going to help determine the shape of our finished blanket. For instance, this one is a rectangle. So your blanket is going to be more of a rectangular shape. If you want to make yours more square, then your end blanket is going to be more of a square shape. I wouldn't make it too long. I wouldn't make it more than maybe seven, eight inches. Eight inches is really long. I'm thinking somewhere between five and six inches is what you want to do, depending on whether you want yours to be a rectangle or a square. So this is the first section that we're going to loom knit. After we've done this section and it is still on the loom, we're going to attach a triangle. We're going to make a triangle because what our end goal is, is that we want to make a square. So we're going to finish this section and then we're going to attach a triangle and we're going to attach a second triangle and that way we'll have a square. Okay. Now in the beginning, when we start, we not only want to make one square, but we want to make two squares. So this is what we're going to be loom knitting in the beginning. We're going to do this section. That's going to be maybe, let's say six or seven inches long. And then you're going to do a triangle. We're going to do another triangle, which is going to give us one square. We're going to immediately attach another triangle and then another triangle. And that's going to give us our second square. So that's what we're going to be doing in the beginning. And then we'll come back and look at our papers and see where we're going from here. Okay, now it's time to get our loom and our hook and our yarn and let's make a 10 stitch blanket. I'm going to recommend that you mark your first and your 10th peg. I know when I was working on my sample blankets for the first time, I didn't have my pegs marked. And what happened at one point is I didn't realize a loop had actually jumped off the 10th peg. And because they all looked alike, I just kept going. And it took me a little while to realize I was only working with nine pegs. I think having the pegs marked is just going to be one less thing you have to worry about. And you'll always know where you are, especially when we start joining seams together and you're going to need to lay the loops around uh, the first peg is just going to be so much easier when you just can look and see where that first peg and that last peg, um, the first and last peg are. So I highly recommend that. You don't have to do it, but I think it's going to make things a lot easier. 
I also don't believe that this is a time to use the bands or the wraps that go around the peg. I believe they're going to get in your way, and I believe that if the pegs have something around them, it's going to be just a little bit more annoying. So I'm going to recommend that you mark your pegs if you choose to do so with a nail polish, with paint, with a marker, or something like that that will sit on the top rather than something that's going to be around the actual peg. We're going to start our 10 stitch blanket the way we start most of our loom knit projects and that is we're going to make a loop in our yarn however you make a loop and once we have that loop we're going to put that loop around the first peg. I'm going to tighten it and then I'm going to hold the, hold the tail yarn for just a little while for tension while I get started wrapping. And I'm going to do the E-wrap around each of these 10 designated pegs. So we're going to put the E-wrap around. And now we're at a 10th peg. We're going to go back the other way because we want two loops on every peg or two wraps on every peg because we're getting ready to do the completed e-wrap stitch. So we have the two wraps on each peg and we're just going to do like we would normally do if we were just doing a row of e-wraps. And there we go. Now we're at the last peg I'm going to take the bottom up over the top. Now we're going to do a row of pearls. So we're going to take our yarn, include all the pegs, lay our yarn down across, and then we're going to do the pearls back the other way. So we know to go under, hmm, under and over, switch it up and off, replace it. All right, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go do our pearl stitches for this row. And now that we have done the pearls, we're going to go back the other way with the wraps because we're going to do another row of the e-wrap stitch. And this is what we're going to do for this first section. We're going to alternate between the pearl row and the e-wrap stitch row until we have our first section or the center of our blanket the height or as long as we want it to be and the shape that we want it to be. Okay, so again, we're just going to go back and forth like this. Now I'm getting ready to do a row of pearl. And so I'm going to do this and I'll be back in a little while to show you where I am. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to go back and forth with a row of the e-wrap stitch and then a row of pearl. Okay, so I'm going to go away. I'll be back in just a few minutes just to show you where I am. Here is where I am right now, and I'm about where I want to be. So mine is rectangle shape, and let me see. Mine is about, with no stretching, it is about six inches 
long. That's just mine. Of course, you can do yours however you want at this point. Okay, now one thing to keep in mind when you're ready to go on to the next step, the main thing you want to keep in mind is that you want to have your working yarn. That's my first peg. You want to have the working yarn at the last peg. So you're probably, wherever you are, you want to, if, you're, if your working yarn is not here on your last peg, then you're probably going to go ahead and do one more row of purl because we want to have that working yarn on the tenth peg. So, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this last row of purls right here in order to get our working yarn over on our tenth peg. Okay. So maybe yours is already over there. If not, then go ahead and do one more row of purl to get your working yarn over on your tenth peg. Okay, now, all right, so I have my working yarn at my 10th peg. It's coming out from my 10th peg right here. And now we're ready to go on to our next section. So let's look at our little map here. So this is what we just did. We made our center section with uh, alternating E-wrap rows and pearl rows. So that's what we have. And now we're getting ready to do this. So what we're getting ready to do now is add our first triangle. That's going to, as I said, it's going to make a square. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the first triangle. It's going to be an, an increasing um, triangle. OK, so the way we're going to do this is Okay, I'm going to talk you through this and then I'm going to show you, but I want to talk you again so you have the idea in your head of what, what we're going for. Okay, so we're going to e-wrap. We're going to e-wrap each of these pegs all the way and we're going to stop before we do the last peg. So we're going to e-wrap everything and we're going to stop here. And then we're going to purl back this way. Okay, and I'll talk about the purling in a minute. But for all intent and purposes, you're going to purl back this way. And then you're going to e-wrap. And the idea is that the next time you're going to stop short with the two. You're going to leave two undone. Okay, so the idea is that each time you purl and you come back, you're going to leave one out. So you're going to purl and come back, leave the next one out. You're going to purl and come back, and you're going to keep doing that you're going to e-wrap and leave one out until there's only one left. And so here is what that's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and e-wrap. So we're making the first triangle of our square. So I'm going to e-wrap, but when I get to the last peg, I am not going to e-wrap it. I'm going to stop and pretend like I am done right here, and I'm going to go ahead and do my E-wrap stitch, pulling the bottom over the top as we would normally do. And I'm going to go back and do this whole row like the E-wrap, but we did not do that, that first or that last peg. Okay, so now, now it's, we're going to purl back this way. But the way we're going to purl while we're making the triangle, this triangle anyway, is we're going to go, we're going to include that peg that we didn't E-wrap. We're going to include it. We're going to say, come on, you're still part of us, so we're going to include you. But we're going to purl, but we're not going to purl it. We're going to skip that one. And we're going to go to the next peg, and we're going to purl, start purling from there. But this one is going to have the yarn going across it, but we're not going to. We're just going to wrap it around as if we're going to purl the whole row. But we didn't include it when we did the e-wrap, so we're not going to purl it now. We're going to skip it, go to the next one, and we're going to purl. And now we're just going to 
pearl all of the other pegs as we would normally do. We're just going to go and pearl. We're going to just pearl and pearl. And if you were to look back at that one, what you see is the yarn laying across that peg, but we didn't pearl it. And so we purled, we started purling at the next one, the next one, and we're going to purl all the rest of these pegs all the way until we get to the tenth peg. Okay, so we're just going to purl and purl and we're going to purl and purl. Okay. And now we're going to purl. And this is our last one. And now we're going to do the e-wrap stitch again back the other way. And so we're going to e-wrap. And we're going to go back the other way, e-wrapping, e-wrapping. And this time, we're going to stop. We're going to leave that one out. OK, we left this one out. But now we're going to leave the next one out. And we're going to do this each time. We're going to leave one out. But now we're leaving this one out. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hold our yarn so that we can start doing the E-wrap stitch where we pull the bottom over the top to complete our stitch. And all right, now it's time to purl. We want to bring the yarn back the other way by purling. So what we're going to do is we're going to include the peg that we left out. This one we're not going to deal with right now. We're going to deal with the new. Each time we're going to just deal with the new peg that we left out. So this is the peg we left out this time. So we're going to take that yarn and include it. We're, that one we're done with for now. So we're going to include this one, OK? We're going to include that one, the one that we just did not e-wrap. And again, we're going to lay it across there, but we are not going to purl it. We're going to include it. So we're going to lay the yarn across it, but we're going to skip it. We're going to go to the next one. So the, each one that we do not wrap for the e-wrap, we're not going to purl, but we are going to lay the yarn across it. OK, so we're going to go ahead now, and I'm going to purl, and we're going to purl right back across. We're going to keep purling until we get to the tenth peg. And we're going to keep going until we get all the way across. We're going to purl all of these pegs. And now we're back at our tenth peg. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually bring it in just a little bit so you can see even better. OK. So now I'm going to e-wrap these pegs going back the other way. So we're going to e-wrap, e-wrap, e-wrap. And now we're going to stop here, all right? So these two we didn't include before. And now we're not going to include the third one. Each time we go, we're going to leave one more out. So now we're leaving this one out. So we're going to go ahead. And do nothing to that one. We're going to pull the bottoms up over the top here. And we're going to do our e finish our e-wrap stitch for the rest of this. Now that we've done that, it's time to purl. And you may have it already, but what we're going to do is the one that we left out, we're going to include it, but we're not going to purl it. These first two, we're done with them. We're only dealing with this one right here. And so we're going to include it, and we're going to lay the yarn across it, but we're not going to purl it. We're going to skip that one. See that? We're not going to do that. We're just going to include it. And then we're going to skip to the next one and purl it. And then we're going to purl the rest of these until we get to our tenth peg. We're just going to purl. And purl. And we're just going to purl until we're at the end of the row. And oops. All right. 
And now we're at our tenth peg. We're going to purl that. Okay. Now, it's time to go back the other way. So we're going to e-wrap. We're going to e-wrap, 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 e-wrap. Okay, so now we know we're going to leave that one out. We're not going to, we're going to leave four, we're at the fourth one. We're going to leave that one out. So every time you can tell because you're going to get to the last one that has one wrap on it. Okay, so when you get to that last one that has one wrap, you're going to leave that alone. And you're going to stop right there. You're going to do your pull bottom, pull the bottom loop over the top, making the complete e-wrap stitch. And we're going to go back the other way. And now that we have done that, we are not going to do anything with these first three over here that have two yarns going across it. But the one that we didn't e-wrap, we are going to include it. We're going to say, come on, we're going to include you. So we're going to bring the yarn across it like that. Okay. So we got the yarn on it, but we're not going to purl it. Okay. So we just have the yarn laying on it. And then we're going to go to the next one. And we're going to purl that one. And we're going to purl. Okay. And purl. And Pearl and pearl, and we're going to just pearl all the way until we get to our tenth peg. Okay, at the tenth peg, it's time to go back the other way. So we're going to e wrap. E wrap, E wrap. We're going to stop when we get to one that only has one loop on it, which is going to be this one now. We're going to stop there because we did all of these and we have, a, we have two yarns going across each of those pegs. So we're going to stop there. We're not going to E wrap that one. We're going to leave that one out and we're going to go back now and finish the E wrap stitch on these pegs that we have on this end. And now it's time to purl. We're going to purl and we're going to include the one that we didn't e-wrap. So we're going to go back over here, lay the yarn across that one as if we're going to e-wrap, but we're not. We're skipping that one and we're going to go to the next one here and we're going to start the purl here. Okay, the purl, we're purling. Okay, purl and purl and purl and purl and purl. Okay, you got it. It's time to go back the other way. We're going to e wrap. E wrap, e wrap, e wrap, e wrap. Uh oh. This is one only has one on it and it's the last one. So we're going to stop this. We're not going to e-wrap that one. We're going to leave that one alone and we're going to go ahead and go back the other way with our e-wrap stitches, completing the e-wrap stitch. We now want to purl back the other way. So we're going to include this one now. We're going to come on back, lay the yarn across as if we're going to purl everything, but we're not going to purl that one. We're going to skip that one, but we're going to have the yarn laying across and we're just going to go ahead and skip that one and we're going to purl the next one, purl the next one, and we're going to purl until we get to our tenth peg. Now it's time to go back the other way with the e-wrap. So we're going to e-wrap. We're going to e-wrap. We're going to e-wrap. Oops, we don't want to e-wrap that one. That one has that one has only one loop on it, but it's the last one in this section now. So we're not going to e-wrap that one. We're going to just go ahead and we're going to finish our e-wraps 
and by pulling the bottoms over the top on these three right here. We're going to come back with the pearl, and so we're going to go around and include this one that we left out. We're going to lay the yarn across the peg, but we're not going to purl it. We're going to skip that one and go to this one and purl this one right here. And we're going to purl these three right here until we get to our tenth peg. Okay, so now we got that done. We're going to now, guess what? Do the E-wrap. We're going to do E-wrap, E-wrap, uh-oh. We're going to stop right here because all of these have two yarns laying across the peg. This has only one. So we're going to stop here and we're going to go ahead and do our up and over for these E-wrap stitches. We're going to now purl coming back this way, but we are going to include that. So we're going to go ahead and lay our yarn across that peg. All right, we're going to lay it there, but we're not going to purl that one. We're going to skip that one, and we're going to purl this one, and we're going to purl this tenth peg here. And now it's time to do the E-wrap stitch. Now, when we do the E-wrap stitch, we're going to E-wrap and, uh-oh, this one we don't want to touch because that has one loop on it and all of these have, we've already skipped. So we're going to skip that one. And so we are going to just take this one, do an E-wrap stitch, go ahead and pull the bottom over the top. And now we are going to purl, but we do want to include that one. So we're going to take our yarn wrap it around, lay it across that peg, but we're not going to purl that peg. We're going to skip to the next one, and we're going to purl this tenth peg right here, and now this is what we have. All right, so we have something that looks like it's two uh, yarns laying across the pegs, or two layers with two different yarns on each peg coming across. And then we have this one that has one. Okay, so what we just did, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it depending on your yarn color. What you just did is, what we just did was we made a triangle. It's hard to see that right now, but it is a triangle. So what we just did was we initially did that part and this is what we just did. We made a triangle, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to make the other triangle in order to make the square, all right? So now it's a little different going back the other way. So making the other half of the triangle, this is what we're going to do. Making the other half of the triangle, we're going to wrap and we're going to e-wrap and now what we're going to do is catch one of these each time. All right, so we're going to catch one of these that have the double layers on them. So we're going to e-wrap and we're going to e-wrap, but we're not going to go any further because we only catch, want to catch one at a time. Okay, so this is our first one. So once we do that, we're going to take both of these layers, lift it up and over, Take this single layer and lift it up and over. And now we want to purl. Now for this one, we are just going to go back over exactly what we did. And we're going to purl these two stitches. Okay, so we're going to purl that stitch. And we're going to purl this stitch. All right, we're going to e-wrap. And this time we're going to stop. Once we get to the first one with two layers on the peg, we're going to stop and go back the other way. So we're going to e-wrap, e-wrap, e-wrap. OK, we're, we're, we're there. We're going to stop. We're there. So we're not going to go any further once we get to a peg that has two. So we're going to take the bottom up and over. We're just going to do the regular up and over the bottom the regular e-wrap, completing the e-wrap stitch. And now we want to purl. And so 
on this half of the triangle, we're only going to pearl what we have erect. So we're going to lay our yarn across these pegs, and we're going to pearl all of the ones that we just erect. So I'm going to go back this way. Okay. And now, okay, now we're going to e-wrap back that way. Again, once we wrap one that has two layers on it, it's time to stop. All right, so this one has two layers. We're going to stop. We're going to do the bottoms over the top. So we're going to pull those two over, that over, that that is now time to purl. We're going to include only the ones that we just did the e-wrap stitch with. So we're going to go back, pull that up, and we're going to purl all the way back. And we're going to purl all the way back. And we're purling back to our 10th peg. All right. All right, so now we are going to e-wrap and ahead of time, we can see once we get to this one with the two layers on it, we're going to grab that one and then we're going to go back. Okay, so we're one, we're e wrapping here, and we're going to e wrap that one. We're going to stop there. We're going to just grab that first one that we see, pull the bottom up over the top, and then we're just going to continue as if we're just making our regular e wrap stitches. Okay, now we're going to purl back the other way. We're just going to purl the ones that we just e-wrapped. So we're going to purl, and we're going to purl, and we're going to purl, and we're going to purl all the way back until we get to the tenth peg. Okay, now what we're going to do is we e-wrap. We want to go back that away now. So we're going to e-wrap, 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 e-wrap. Uh-oh, here's one with two. We're going to grab that first one. We're not going to touch any of the others. We're going to stop right here where we have the two layers. We're going to take those two layers and pull them up and over. And we're just going to do our regular e-wrap stitch where we pull the bottom up over the top. Okay, and now it's time to purl. And when we're going to purl with this half of the triangle, we're just going to include everything that we just e-wrapped. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to go back and we are purling and we are going to purl all the way back Curling all the way back and curl again. And we're going to curl. Now that we finished curling, we're on this end. It's time to go back the other way with the e wrap stitch. So we're going to e wrap, e wrap, e wrap, e wrap, e wrap, e wrap. And we're going to catch that one, but we're not going to go any further. So we're going to catch the one with the two bands down below, and we're going to use that as one and pull it up and over, and then we're going to go ahead and complete our row as we would complete a regular row of the e-wrap stitch. And now we're ready to purl, and we're going to purl right from where we are. We're not going to catch any new ones. We're just going to do every single one that we've done so far. So. That's what we're going to do. I don't know if you could see that. We're just catching this right in here. And let me actually back up just a little bit. Getting too close. Okay, so like that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to purl every single one of these. And we're going to purl and purl and purl all the way back, okay, and, okay, 
And what you should be seeing, what you probably have seen, see the little corner coming out? See how the, it's making a corner right here? All right, so we got our corner going. So now we're just going to complete it. We have three more pegs to catch. So we're going to go e-wrap, going to e-wrap all of these here. And we're going to catch the next one and only one that has the two, um, what I call the bands of yarn on the bottom. And we're going to take those two as one, lift it up and over, and then we're just going to continue that doing the E-wrap st stitch, pulling the bottom over the top until we get to our first, or rather our tenth peg. And now we're ready to purl back, come back this way. So we're just going to include only the ones that we just worked on. We're going to lay our yarn across. We're going to take and do our purl. Well, purl and purl and purl. And you don't want to pull too tight, but you do want to be mindful that you're you know, pulling a little taut so everything's not just all loosey goosey. Okay, so we're gonna just come right back over here with all these pearls back to our tenth peg. And once we're at the tenth peg, it is now time to go back the other way with the e wraps. Let me get some yarn over here. So we're gonna e wrap, e wrap, e wrap. E wrap all the way back, all the way, all the way, all the way, and we're gonna include the next one with the two loops on it. So we're gonna include that one, and now we're gonna use those two loops as if they're one. We're gonna pull those two loops up and over, and then we're just gonna go about our business as if we were just doing our regular E wrap knit stitch where we pull the bottoms over the top. That's what we're doing. And now it's time to purl. So we're going to go in here. We're going to get our purl yarn. And we're going to include all of the pegs that we just did that yarn up and over on. So we're going to purl all of these now. Again, we're just going to purl everything until we get back to our tenth peg. So we're going to purl. Pearl. All right. Pull. Uh oh, my yarn keeps getting stuck. Okay, pull it. Pearl. And there you go. And all righty. All right, this pearl. And this is our last one here on our 10th. All right. Now we have one with two bands left. So we're going to go get that one now. We have done all of these. We're going to now e-wrap, e-wrap all the way back to that first peg. We're going to e-wrap. E-wrap, E-wrap, and now that's the last one we have with two yarns across the bottom. We're going to treat those two yarns as one as we pull them up, over, and off. And now we're just going to pull the bottoms up and over as we go across the whole, all the pegs on the loom, the 10 pegs, <laughs> until we get to the 10th peg. And now we have one more thing to do before our corner, look at our corner, will be finished. And that is we're going to purl back and now we're including all of them. So we're going to purl every single one of the 10 pegs. So we're going to purl, all right, and we're going to purl, and we're going to purl all the way back. And so we're just going to keep purling until we get back to our 10th 
peg. Okay. All right. Okay. And now we're there. All right. And now we have completed a square. So again, I don't know if you can really see, but there's your square. You should have, you just did a square here. So let me go in a little bit so we can appreciate the square. So we have our, our first square, all right? So there's our square. And depending on the yarn, it's gonna be easier or, or more difficult to see, but you should see a little line down the middle, middle and that separates your two uh, triangles that you did and you made a square. Now because we're at the beginning of this project, remember what I said? So far what we have done is we have done this section, we did this, and we just finished this. So we have our first square. Okay, now what we want to do, be, just in the beginning we're going to do this, we're going to make two squares. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make another triangle and then another triangle, okay, before we get started really into the blanket. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make another triangle. We're going to make two more triangles because we want to make another square, okay? So we're going to do the exact same thing we did before, and so I'm going to walk you through everything we just did so that you can get it for a second time for those of you who need that. Now we're going to make our second square. Here's our first square. This is the beginning of our project, always in the beginning of our 10 stitch blanket. We want to make two squares in the beginning together. So we have one square. So I'm going to walk you through making the triangles so that we can make our square. So we have one square. The way we're going to begin is we're going to e-wrap all across the same way we made our first triangles and our first square. We're going to go all across until we get to the last loop here. We are not going to include it. We're going to start our finishing our e-wrap stitch by pulling the bottoms over the top and we're just going to go right back and we're going to leave that one with that one loop on the end by itself and we're going to go all the way back and now it's time to purl but now we feel a little bad so we are going to include it so we are going to include that one but we're not going to purl it we're going to leave it empty and we're going to we're going to put the yarn across it but we're going to not purl it we're going to purl the one next to it okay so that one will have a yarn across it but we're not going to purl it and we are going to purl all of the rest of the loops on the peg we're going to purl everything all of these we're going to purl all the way back to our tenth peg so we're just going to purl Pearl all the way back. Okay, now that we have done that, we are now going to do the e wrap back because we're going back the other way. So we're going back, we're going back, we're going back, and we're going to stop when we get to the next loop that only has one, uh, the last loop that has one, all right? So we're not going to do anything to that peg. So we're going to go ahead and do our bottom pull over as we would normally do. We're not gonna do anything to that next to last peg over there. And now it's time to purl. So we are going to include it. We're not going to do anything to that first one over there, but we are going to include this one now. And we're going to let a yarn lay across it, but we're not going to purl it. We're going to skip that one. We're going to come into this one, 
and we're going to start purling here. Okay, and we're going to purl everything. And we're going to go back the other way now with the pearls. And just right now looks like a normal row of purling. We're just purling. Okay, and now it's time to go back the other way. So we're going to e-wrap, 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 e-wrap. We're going to stop because this is the last peg that only has one on it. We don't want to do anything to that. These two we've done, they have two uh, layers of yarn on them. We're going to stop here. We're not going to include that one. We're going to just go back the other way, doing our regular bottom over the top for completing the E-wrap stitch. And now it's time to purl, coming back the other way. We are going to include it. These two, of course, we're not going to deal with. We're not dealing with those. We're dealing with this one. We skipped it, but we are going to include it, but we're not going to purl it. But we are going to wrap the yarn around it as if we were going to purl it, but we're not going to. We're going to skip it and go to the next one, and we're going to purl that one. And, and from then on in, we're just going to purl and purl and purl until we get to the tenth peg. And what we're going to do Okay, time to go back the other way. We're going to e-wrap. 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 E E wrap. Oops, we're going to stop because this is the last one with one loop on it. We're not going to include that one. That's the last one with one. We're not going to include it. We're going to stop. We're going to go back the other way. We're going to pull the bottoms over the top and complete our E wrap stitches. Okay, now it's time to purl. And we're going to include that one. We're not going to deal with any of those over there. But this one that we just missed, we're going to include it. But we're not going to purl it. We're going to leave that yarn just laying across there. And we're going to go to the next one. And we're going to purl. And purl. And purl. And we're just going to purl all the way now. Okay, so now that we've come this way with the pearls, it's time, let's get this last pearl, it's time to go back the other way with the e-wraps. So we're going to e-wrap, 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 oh, got to stop. We're up to the next one that only has one on it. We're going to leave that last one, always leave the last one with one alone. Okay, so it has one. We're not going to touch it. We're going to go back the other way. All right, so we're going to go back the other way. And now it's time to purl. But we feel bad, so we're going to include it. Okay, we're going to bring it back into the fold, as it were. But we're not going to purl it. We're just going to lay the yarn across it as if we were going to purl it, but we're not going to. We're going to skip it and go to the next one, and we're going to purl that one. Okay, and then we're going to purl the next one. And we're going to purl all the rest of these here for now. And... Okay, 
guess what? Yes, time to go back the other way. So we're going to e-wrap, 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 e-wrap. Oops, stop. This one only has one, and it's the last one with one. I'm going to stop right there, and we're going to bottoms over top, go back the other way. Okay, it's time to purl. We are going to include that one, but we're not going to purl that one. And so we're going to skip it and go to the next one, and we're going to purl the rest of these here. And just keep purling and purling. Okay, now. You got it. E-wrap, E-wrap, E-wrap. Oops. Mm-mm. The last one that only has one. We're not going to touch that one. We're going to go back the other way with bottoms over the top. It is time to purl, but we are going to include it. So we're going to include it, but we're not going to purl it. We're going to skip that one and go right to the next one. And we're going to purl. And we're going to purl, and we're going to purl. All right. Okay. Now, time to e-wrap. E-wrap, e-wrap. Oops, stop. <laughs> that one only has one. It's the last one that only has one. We're not going to deal with that one. We're going to go down here. So it's time to purl. We're going to go around here. We are going to include it, but we're not going to purl it. So we're going to lay the yarn across, and we're going to go ahead, and we're going to purl and purl and, okay, time to e-wrap, e-wrap, oops, that's the next one with only one, so we're going to Lift this one up and over, and we're going to purl now. We are going to include that one, so we're going to lay the yarn across it. We're going to go ahead, skip it, though, and purl this last one here. And Okay, so now we've done, we have all of these, have two yarns across them, except this last one, which only has one. But now we've made, a, we've finished, we have completed another triangle. So now we're going to do the other half of the triangle. And the way we do that is we're going to e-wrap, e-wrap, bringing in that, the first one that has two loops on it. And we're going to treat those two loops as one. Up and over, up and over. And then we're going to purl both of these all the way, everything that we just E-wrap, we're now going to purl when we go back when we're doing the second half of the square. Okay, and now we're going to e-wrap, e-wrap, e-wrap. Okay, we're going to stop right there. That's the first one that has two, so we're going to stop. Treat those two as one. Pull it up and over, up and over, and up and over. It's time to purl. We're going to purl everything that we just did the e-wrap stitch on. So we're going to purl that. Purl and purl. Okay. We're going to e-wrap. E-wrap, 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 stop. This is the next one that has two. We only want to grab the one that's closest to what we're doing that has two. So that has two on the bottom. We're going to treat those two loops as one, pull it up and over, and then we're going to do the up and overs for the rest of the pegs. Now it's time to purl. We're only going to include what we just e-wrapped. So we're going to purl these pegs right here.
And so we have completed purling that row. We're going to go back the other way with the E-wrap stitches. E-wrap, E-wrap, and E-wrap, stop. This one has two loops on it, so we're going to stop there. Take these two as one, up and over, up and over, and we're going to do the up and overs. And now it's time to purl. So we're going to include only the things that we just e-wrapped. And so we're going to purl these right here. Okay. And whoops. We're purling. And purl. And purl. Okay, it's time to e-wrap. So we're going back the other way with the e-wrap. E-wrap, e-wrap, e-wrap. Okay, this is the last one that we're going to do right now in this group because this is where two loops are. So we're going to take these two loops as one up and over. Okay, everything up and over, up and over, up and over, up and over. Now we're going to purl only the ones that we just did the e-wrap stitch on. And so we're going to purl, and we're going to purl, okay. Time to e-wrap. Okay, we're going back the other way with the e-wrap. E-wrap, 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 e-wrap. Oops, we're at the first one with two loops. We're going to take that, those two loops as one, and we're going to go back the other way. All right, now we're going to purl the ones that we just e-wrapped. And so we're going to purl, purl, purl. Time to e-wrap. There you go. E-wrap. E-wrap. And I'm going to stop here because this one has two. All right. So we're going to pull these two up over as one. And... Now it's time. Now is time to e-wrap, going back the other way, and stop. This one has two on it. We're going to lift those two up and over, and we're going to go back.
Okay, we're going to e-wrap back and we're going to get that last. We have one more peg that has two loops on it. We're going to get that one and then we're going to take these two as if they're one and we're going to come back all across during the pull-ups, pulling the bottoms over the top and Now we're going to do our pearls. We are finishing our last three pearls, and when we finish these last three pearls, we will have finished our second square. And we are on our way. Let's see here, we're gonna go square. All right, so now, if you can see, we have one square, two squares. We have two squares and so we did this, we've done this, we did this, and we did, we've done that, and it. so what we have here is we have these are our two squares. Okay, here's what we have. And ideally, where we're going, where we want to go, is we want to go where we have a seam that comes down here that is going to be attached to another section that when we open this, we're going to have this and we're going to have a section that's attached to this part. Okay. Now, how are we going to do okay, that? So the only we, peg we're going to put new loops on is the first peg. And every time we put a new loop on, though, we're going to be putting it down that way. We want to put it down that way. We want to put it down so that it's going that way. Okay? Now, to get the first loop, and this is what you're going to do. Once you've done this, then you will have all the steps that you need to complete the blanket. After this, is just repeating. So this is the last main section that you need to know. And once you know this section, then it's just doing a section, doing one square or two triangles, which will equal one square, and then you're going to do this section. And then you're going to do another square, and then you're going to do this section. So what we're going to do to get started when we're ready to do this section is we're going to follow the invisible line where the two triangles on this side meet. And there will be like a shadow line. You'll see uh, where the two triangles meet. You're going to follow that down to the first peg. When you get down to the bottom, what you want to do after you follow that invisible line is you want to find the bottom loop down there. You want to find the bottom loop that's at the bottom of this invisible um, line that's joining the two triangles that leads into this peg. And so once you get to the bottom, you're going to find a loop. You're going to find the bottom loop at the end of this invisible line, and you're going to put it right on top of that first peg. And remember, you're going to be going that way. You want everything to be laid down that way. So now I just put a loop from the bottom here on this peg right there, OK? So I'm going to just back up a little bit, make sure you understand? Don't try to overthink it. I was, I was trying to overthink it. And 
to me, that's why the 10 stitch blanket is such a genius concept because, wow, it's just incredible how it works. To me, it's almost like magic. So we have our section here and we're going to lay this down over here, but the only loop we're ever going to be adding is one loop at a time. We're going to add one loop at a time from this edge over here, one at a time. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that first loop. We're going to go to the bottom of the invisible line that's joining the two um, triangles. We're going to find a loop that's down there at the very bottom. Find a loop at the bottom. We're going to lay it on that away. So we're going to lay that loop on that first peg. All right, so now we have a loop on the first peg. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. It's still always e wraps and um, e wraps and pearls. That's all we're going to keep doing e wraps and pearls. So let me back up just a little so you can see now. Okay, so so what I'm going to do now, I have this this loop on this peg which came from the bottom of that uh, triangle. I put it on the first peg. I'm not doing anything to the rest of these pegs. I am going to now e-wrap. I'm going to e-wrap. I'm going to e-wrap all the way, all the way back up. And I'm going to e-wrap the first peg. And now I have three loops. I have those two. I have two from the bottom. So I'm going to take the two that are at the bottom and I'm going to lift those two up over and off. And then I'm going to go back down and I'm going to do just what we've always been doing. Lift these up and over and off. Okay. And now, and now, we're going to do what we've been doing the whole time. We're going to purl. We're going to include everything in there, and we're going to purl back to the other end. So we're going to purl. All right. And we're going to purl all the way back. Okay, and now we're back with our working yarn on the 10th peg. Okay, now what we're going to do here is because we're going to lay the loops at various intervals. We want them to be even intervals. So what I do is I use these, uh, let me bring on my markers. For me, it helps to use markers to say, okay, this is going to be the next loop I'm going to use right here. And I, I use the loops, let me see again. The way I do it is I've been using the loop, finding a loop in between the two knots. Up and down the side, the edge of this section, there are going to be knots. One row from when you were loom knitting and the other row from when you were purling. So one row, they're going to be like knots, little, you'll see them. Okay, so here. So I go in between these knots. I gather, I say I'm going to do this one, I'm going to get a loop from here, and then I'm going to get a loop from here, and then I mark it so that when I'm ready for my next loop, I don't have to hunt for it, and I know which one I said I was going to do, and for me it just makes it easier. And if you're going to add, need a lot of markers when your blanket gets, as your long blanket gets bigger, but what you can do is just put markers in the beginning and then move them up as 
you place the loops on and you don't need the markers anymore so you would move them up here okay so remember we're always going to be folding it down facing down on the loom so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the next loop so this is the loop that i have this marker in i'm going to take that loop and i'm going to put that loop on the first peg all the loops only go on the first peg I have it on the first peg. So what I'm going to do now, this out of the way, is I'm going to do, and I've got to back up some now, I'm too close, okay. <laughs> All right, let me back up so you can see what I'm doing now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the E-wrap stitch. So we're going to E-wrap the same thing. And this is what we're going to do as we join our section. We're going to E-wrap and include that first peg on the first peg there are two loops on the bottom we're going to lift those two up and off and then we're going to do what we've been doing to complete our e-wrap stitches okay and and now we come back we want to purl we want to purl all the way back now So we're going to purl. Okay, now that we have done the purl, it's time to add another loop. So make sure you're at your first peg. You're gonna get your next loop. I have this one, I've decided this is my next loop. I'm placing it down, we want it to go that way, placing it down on that first peg, okay? Once it's on the first peg, we're going to e-wrap. And we've come to where we have the two loops at the bottom. We're going to up and over. We're going to do this all the way back. And OK. And now that we've done that, it's time to purl. We always want to bring our yarn back with the purl until we get it back to the 10th um, peg. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to purl. And again, you don't have to pull really, really tight, but you want it to be kind of taut because you don't want to everything to be all loosey-goosey. Okay, so keep that in mind. And, okay, as we purl here. And, Alright, and now it's time to add another loop. So I have marked this loop, so I'm just going to go right ahead and I'm going to put this loop here on, let's see, I want one, put that right there. Okay, so now we got the two loops, we're ready to e-wrap. So we're going to e-wrap, 
all the way. And so this is what we're going to do until we have gone up the whole side of that section and put um, loops at intervals on the first peg until we've used up, until there are no more loops and we're all, we're all the way at the end or the top, however you want to look at it, of that section. Okay. So. Okay. All right, and now we're going to purl back. Include all of the pegs, and we're going to purl. All right, we pull it. Of course, it's going to be a lot easier and a lot more fun to loom knit this when you're not holding it on a table like this. Okay, so. Okay, time to add another loop. So we're, we're going just up the side here at different intervals. Now, like I said, I'm taking uh, my loops from in between these little uh, knots that I see, or they look like knots to me. Um, you can, if you want to choose the knot instead of going in between the knot, I suppose you can do that too. But try to keep the intervals even, and that's what marking them helps me to do. It helps me to just see where I am. So I'm going to mark some more here with, they go. And so the idea is to, one by one, add all of these loops to that first peg. Do the E-wrap stitch, and then go back with the purl, add another loop, and, and do it all over again. All right, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and finish putting all these. So now here, I'm going to put a loop, and this is, this is the first row that we did when we started our project here. So we want to make sure we get this corner right here. So I'm going to put a loop here in this corner. All right, now these are how many times I'm going to be adding a loop and, and going back and forth with the E-wraps and the pearls, okay? So now I'm going to add this loop right here. All right, okay, so now we're going to Okay, we're going to do the E-wrap all across here. Okay, and all right, got our two bottoms here. We're going to lift them up and over, and we're going to go ahead and go back this way. All right, and now it's time to purl. So we're going to get all of that in there, get all the loops, all the pegs in, and we're going to purl.
All right? All right. Time to add another loop. And so now I'm going to add this loop right here, or at least from this section, I'm going to take it. And we're always going to go down, facing it down like that. So I'm going to put my loop down like that. And now, now in some of those loops, it may be one strand or two strand. Uh, you can decide if you want to grab two strands or one strand each time you grab a loop. I'm trying to grab one strand so that it's not so thick, but it's up to you. And I'll show you what I mean next time I grab a loop. Okay. Okay, and time to purl. Okay, now time to add another loop. And what I was talking about when I was talking about the one strand and the two strand, let me go in here. Okay, so right here I have the marker. I don't know if you can see, but it has, there are a few strands there. It, I could take one or two, or I could just take one, um, or I could take, Okay, see, here I could take these two strands right here, I have two, or I can just take the one. What I'm preferring to take is I'm just taking one strand at a time from each of these sections, and I'm just putting one strand across my first peg, going that way, always laying it down. And I don't know if you just saw what I did or not, but in between, you're going to see that there are going to be options because you're going to look in, in between, for instance, the little knots, and you say, oh, I'm going to get a, a yarn, but there are two yarns. Sometimes you're going to see three yarns. Well, you can decide how many you want to grab. However many you grab, your, your seam is going to be thicker, however. And also, if you decide you're going to just take one, then it's best to take one all the time and not take oh. Uh, one yarn sometimes and then a couple of yarns the next time again i don't know if you can see it but just decide on how many yarns you want to take to put on the peg and that's what i'm talking about <laughs> okay all right so we'll revisit that at another date but i think you got what i i'm i'm thinking you got it <laughs> okay so now we're going to e-wrap all the way back up here and I am going to back off a little bit. OK. And now two up and over. And we're going to be doing this until we put all those loops one by one on the first peg. Now it's pearl time. And over here.
All right, now we're going to add another loop. I have this one marked right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take this, putting it on that way, laying it down. I'm going to take this loop and lay it down on that first peg. All right, so we have a loop on our first peg, and now we're going to be wrapped. Okay, we're going to take the two bottoms up over the top, and uh -oh. time to curl. Now, already though. I think you can see, see how we are, that section is just being magically added. I don't know if you see what's going on there, but we are actually making a seam down here by just using that one peg each time. Okay, what was I about to do? We were about to purl. <laughs> okay, so let me purl. Let's add another loop. One of my one of my markers jumped off. You wrap. And two bottoms over. We're going to roll. All right, we're going to add the next loop going up the side here. We're going to get our loop and we're going to put it on top 
always laying it down that way. So we're going that way. So we'll lay the loop down and we are going to be wrapped. Okay, and now we're going to get another loop, lay it on the first peg, all right, oops, okay, and now Okay, find the pearl.
Okay, I believe one jumped off, so I'm going to go ahead and get this one. I feel like a, I lost a, uh, I feel like one of my markers jumped out. So I'm going to go ahead and do this interval so that it's even, even though I don't see the marker. Okay, so.
Okay, this is our last one, and we want to make sure we're grabbing the corner, as close to the corner of this section as possible. So we're right on the corner, and I'm going to move the marker, put it on, always facing it face down, going that way. All right, and now this is our last one for this joining section, and I'm going to... E wrap, E wrap, E wrap. Okay. Now we're going to take these two, hold them up. Curl. Guess what? We've completed our first joining section, and look at what we have now. Look. <laughs> you see our blanket is coming along. Now, so that's one side, and here is, uh, hard to show with this, but here's the other side. And so we have our blanket, uh, our tin pegs still here intact with loops on them. And so what you would do now is you're going to make, <laughs> you're going to start making the triangles. You're going to make two triangles, and then you're going to start the joining um, se section, just as we did. So now it's really just repeat, just keep repeating. So what I would be doing now, if I was continuing, I'd say, okay, let me start my first triangle. Yeah, We're going to go over here. We're going to leave out that first peg when we start our first triangle, and we're going to just pull everything up and over, up and over, up and over, and this is what we would do if we were going to keep going. We'd go back to making our first triangle, and remember our first triangle. So go back, play the video back if you need to see the first triangle, or again, so we don't, we don't, uh, we don't purl that one. We bring the yarn across and we skip to the second one. And so now we're making the first triangle of our square and we're only going to make one square from now on. We only make two squares in the beginning of our blanket. For the rest of our blanket, we're only going to make one square which means two triangles, and then we're going to join. We're going to just join that section just like we just did. And so you have everything you need to um, finish your blanket. It's about remembering. This, I always say it's like doing a dance and trying to remember the choreography. So hopefully the things that are in this video, if you forget something, I'm going to have chapters in the description box. So you can find what you need on a, on a certain day or at a certain time to get you through the section you need to get through. And so what I would continue here is making my first triangle and then my second triangle. And then I would be doing the same thing we just did where I find the sections, lay it over, find the loops along the edge. Um, if it's helpful for you to use markers, then do that. And you're just going to keep going around and around and around until your blanket is the size that you want it to be. Okay, I hope this has been helpful for you. 
let me know if you have any questions. I'll see if I can <laughs> answer them in a concise way. Thank you so much for joining. And that's our 10 stitch blanket tutorial. Thank you.